Welcome everybody to the East Coast Hub streaming tonight through Kingdom Talks. I have with me guest tonight, Luke Agee. We're going to talk about the conference. We're going to talk about his new book and how to get that. And we're going to talk about a lot of different things. But if you stand by with us for a few minutes, Luke, if you want to just chat a little bit, I'm going to share out to our other groups and ourselves and so people can start watching awesome sure, night sure. isn't it <laughs> it is yeah it's been it's been such a beautiful day here i don't know about for you but for me it's been beautiful um really enjoy being outside today hanging out with my family um it's been beautiful yeah um good evening everyone everybody that's joining <clears throat> feel free to share and invite people in we want to talk with you about some stuff. We're not just trying to sell you my book. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk we're, about a lot. Yeah, we're going to talk about some things. We had a recent conference in Virginia, right in uh, Karen's backyard, almost literally. And uh, we had an awesome time with her and the Elastic Army Band and with <laughs> you know, Dina Hodges. And we made some new friends and strengthen some older relationships that Karen had with some others and I'm, I mostly made a lot of new friends she she mostly got to re reestablish some friendships so that was good um, but yeah we had a great time and uh, just want to chat with everyone about some things that took place there and uh, yeah so Definitely. welcome 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 yeah so we had the mystery conference last weekend it was awesome a big shout out to tracy and gary mcreynolds who allowed us to use their facility their church they were awesome um their whole um realm of people that they have um as part of their um their church body they were awesome uh look the worship was um off the hook man those people knew how to rock it out yeah, <laughs> that's for yeah. sure <laughs> That's right. I looked, the whole left side of the room was flying through the air. I was like, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and Gil and Adina, I want to thank them so much um, for uh, helping me um, and saying yes to let's doing it because they were going to come in and just visit and hang out with me. And I go, hey, if you're here, why don't you do it? Luke was going to come and hang out. And I said, hey, if you're here, why don't you speak too? Yeah. So, and uh, so it was really, it was my first time doing a conference. It went off without a hook. Very fun to do. We're going to do some more. I'm going to talk to Gary and Tracy again and see if we can do one in a few more months. I'd like to have... Um, well, maybe I'll put it out there. I would uh, talk to the, my friend True Sika and Nina, and I'm thinking about one other, and let's see what happens as wow. we put this thing together. So it'll be bombastic. Oh, sounds amazing. <laughs> and, you know, in Virginia, I mean, this was like, to me, I don't know how you felt about it, Luke, but um, I know for our area, um, they haven't heard some of the things you guys, Gil and Adina, have been teaching. And now we've come in and brought you guys in, and I felt like there was something that opened up, and um, now there's no turning back. <laughs> we, we have to yeah. move forward, you know? Yeah, for sure. There were some new doorways open, some new pathways open there for some deeper truths to come in, and there's definitely uh, nothing but hungry people there that we, you know, encountered that were looking to step into some of those deeper truths and move forward into kingdom type age mentalities and let go some older mindsets and traditionalism and step into some powerful things that are, you know, part of what was used to be called the power of the age to come, you know, eventually there's got to be a time frame where we, we stop calling it the power of the age to come and stop making it the power of what we're operating in now. And, uh, you know, it's got to become a reality at some point. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. <clears throat> awesome. So they were definitely, definitely taking some steps for that. And I feel like there was some, you know, uh, some, some very strategic things that took place there as far as in the spirit realm, uh, a lot of stuff that broke open and a lot of stuff that they encountered. So good stuff yeah it was awesome i mean um just you know um you know we got to minister with our music we had a lot of new stuff that we've been working on and being able to put that out and we had written a song for uh gill's 
uh, Sons of the One, <laughs> and we're able to introduce that to them as a surprise, and I yeah. hope they were blessed by that. And speaking of that, we had a conversation you and I have on the messenger, so it looks like we're going to collaborate with Luke and do a, what do you want to call it, Luke? It wouldn't be soaking, would it? No, it's more of a, med- I would say more of a meditative yeah, there you go. Yeah. Do something. Yeah, that, frequencies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like and that. Uh, while Luke is going to, um, you know, breathe in some scripture and things like that in the music, what a collaboration. We haven't done that before, and uh, that's going to be really cool. It is. Really cool. <laughs> yeah. I've had that idea for a little while now, and, uh, you know, now, now that my book is out, and now that we've had this conference come and go it was one of those things where it just felt like now is the time to reach out and ask you about having the band do that and so really really excited about that for sure i think you know that's always been something that uh, i think a lot of people have been impacted be- uh, by before in their lives having soaking soundtracks having worship soundtracks having meditative soundtracks and so i think a lot of people benefit from that and i just felt like it was a good time to uh have us collab and make something like that happen i'm very excited very excited yeah i'm still sharing a little bit so um, sure. you guys uh <laughs> did you put it on your page by the way or are you yeah. live on your page good yeah, yes, glad yeah. awesome so i was just sharing yeah. a little bit um yeah. so everybody gets a chance to uh check tonight's sessions out hey guys luke shared some of this um during the conference but this is his new book, uh, The Immortal You, okay? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I have the Kindle version, and he has the real version. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading this for a couple of days, and um, I, I'm totally in agreement with what's, what you're saying here, and you shared some of it during the conference. And uh, wow, powerful, because sometimes we do forget who we are, and we look at those scriptures and we go, well, if by his stripes we are healed. And I mean, you just brought so much scripture out in this and telling people who they are. They don't have to, you know, die. And what brings me up to, um, somebody had posted, um, and I think it was Ruthie Andrews had posted something about people saying they have to die to self. Can we just stop speaking dying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 100%. I mean, yeah. I, I get the whole thing, what, you, what they're saying, but we have to stop speaking death because if we're made in the image of who he is, why do we have to die to ourselves? That's it. The That's only it. thing we have to do is change our mindsets about things. That's, That's it. it. That's so, I mean, the immortal you. I mean, this is like when I, when I went through um, reading most of this, I was like, wow. Um, You know, because I know, um, like for me, when I found out I had some um, colon cancer, and I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, you know, and my hair was like playing games, you know, and I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to die, you know. (laughs) And and then I got through my, um, went through, um, you know, Gil, and Gil goes, Karen, stop thinking like that. Stop thinking like that. You got to think different. That's you got to go reverse on it. You can't get get caught up in that. And I didn't. And I said, okay, get my head leveled out, <laughs> and just started speaking into my own body and started speaking truth. And the outcome was it didn't spread. A simple procedure, it was done. So good. Here I am. So, <laughs> so to me, like I'm like, I've walked a little bit of that out. So I, I'm hearing exactly what you're saying. You know, stop when when you um, get a diagnosis or, you know, start, you know, praying in the spirit was a big thing for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I know you're going to talk about that. So. Yeah. Talk about your book some. And- yeah, sure. So full agreement with you. I mean, you know, we talked about this at the conference some. Our words are spirit and life, mm-hmm. uh, but they can also be spirit and death, which is a real problem. Yeah. So coming into agreement with things is not just about deciding whether you want to believe a certain thing or not believe a certain thing. It's literally about what is what is the greater truth. Got it. Okay. 
it's it's about uh, it's it's actually about what is true or what is not true. You know, there there's fact, but then there's greater truth. And that's the example I always really like is that there's gravity. But the greater truth is, is that you can overcome gravity. And that's why we have airplanes that can fly in the sky, birds that can fly in the sky. There's greater truths than saying, well, what goes up must come down. And you say, yeah, but there's a greater truth that there's things that can go into the, these realms that say, you know, people say is impossible. You know, people think that, uh, but we believe in immortality in the Christian realm in, in the sense of what is actually called eternal life. What I, what I mean by that is that we readily accepted that we, we lay down our physical body at some point and then we continue to eternally exist. But literally, Jesus tells us in John 11, he says, you can believe in me and never die. And he also talks about John the Re Revelator, John the Beloved, the same guy, and says, if I choose that he never dies and stays and lives for all of eternity, what's that to you? We all know that Enoch skipped death and we we understand faith right for the most part most of us have all engaged in faith walked through the faith movement in the church understood faith for many years now well it literally says that's all enoch needed now i don't really get into enoch in my book because there's not a lot of necessity to he's been talked about a lot <laughs> in a lot of different avenues and everybody knows he skipped death which is why i chose the route of going with some ones that maybe people don't necessarily know did that and i'll let you check that out in the book for yourself but you know when you start to really get into what jesus talks about he really basically comes to debunk death and to destroy death is literally what he says to us over and over again he says eat my flesh drink my blood so that you can live everlasting life immortality is to know the father and to know his son you know and we've used so many scriptures that when i was growing up was used to uh you know try to get us to believe in either a heaven or a hell outcome and that's not the point of the conversation but the point is is that the scriptures don't even mention those things they're not even listed there in the scriptures that are used for that that's what really got me thinking many years ago was john three sixteen, like the most famous scripture out there it doesn't have heaven or hell in it. it doesn't even talk about salvation at all it literally says for god so loved the world that he gave his beloved son that whosoever believeth in him mm -hmm shall not perish shall not die simple Does have everlasting life yeah it's very simple that. simple it's like death. and that's you know it says the last enemy to be defeated is death and as we know jesus defeated all enemies so that last enemy truthfully is right here in the mind and so once we start to understand that we are life beings because we've been made one with him and he is a life being then that we start to comprehend that death should have no part in our lives anymore. And if we're going to restore creation, you know, it says that the uh, God of creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, you know, the Huios Theos, then what creation is waiting for is to be redeemed, as it says, from the futility that it was subjected to. So even creation wants to be freed from death. And so it's all about death or life. Everything we can choose on a daily basis is associated to either death or life rooted in either fear or love and so everything that jesus came to talk about was we need to break the association with fear and death we need to break all the association with anything that is not life giving that is not part of life everlasting life eternal not life you know whatever's not life giving we need to separate from mm -hmm. and that's why being fully connected to him is becoming fully connected to life one of the few things that it specifically says in scripture god is one of those things is life and so to become you know fully connected with him means to accept that we've been brought into the fullness of life and that's spirit soul and body yeah i was connecting with this because i could see the synchronicity with um sound and uh, frequencies here um yeah. you know speaking life speaking depth uh, it all carries a frequency, and, and we frame up uh, what we do around us by what we speak or our attitudes towards something. Even our thinking counts, you know. So I, I could see that because, um, you know, like sound and frequency, our heart um, produces that. So we might not see it, but we have like this force field around us. And whatever our heart is, because what does it say? Your heart 
what comes right. from the mouth comes from your heart, right? So yeah. your heart is producing a frequency around you. You may not see it. Some of us may see it. <laughs> and um, you brought up a lot about Paul in this book. Oh, and I want to say, you did not, as far as I've seen, most people go, I'm under attack of the enemy. <laughs> I yeah. did not see you bring that up one yeah. time. Not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody goes, I'm being under attack. I'm under attack. I'm under attack. It's the enemy. It's the enemy. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I never saw you write one thing in there to say that. No, because see, any any of that is, is once again rooted in connection to fear and death. Mm -hmm. And if we really understand that what all Jesus accomplished in the finished work of the cross. Now, I'm not saying there aren't things that happen in our lives that make us go, there's something going on here. But really, yeah. when we trace it back, we can actually find that 99% of everything that we find happening and going on in our lives have something to do with what we've released into our own existence. We've co-created, we've framed up, we've allowed into our existence something through our intentional desires, through our agreements, and through our spoken word. Because we literally create realities with our words. That's why it says the power of life and death is in the tongue. So what that means is, is that we can become our own enemy. So a lot of times when we're blaming some enemy for something, we might need to actually go back and take a heart check on what it was we released into, not even our own lives, mm -hmm. but if we've released it into others. And what I mean by that is Matthew 7, when Jesus talks and he says, judge not in the way you do not want to be judged, for in the way that you judge, you shall be judged. Well, if I'm cursing certain things all the time, that means I have formed a partnership with death through cursing. So that means that I can actually be uh, allowing there to be an open door into my own life that has an attachment to death because I've decided that I am going to partner with cursing instead of blessing. And so therefore I've partnered with death instead of life. So that goes back to where I, what we were saying there a minute ago about Jesus saying that he said his words are spirit and life. Well, if words are spirit and life what if they're also spirit, but can be of death instead? So what that means is, is that you can be releasing living, tangible things into existence. And like you were saying about frequencies, you know, I literally was talking about that this morning with a couple of people uh, about like the video you shared at the conference. That's super awesome where uh, uh, you see people speaking positive things and life things over plants and over water that's freezing and over uh you know different things and and then there's some where there's uh death and negativity and horrible things being spoken and you see the results from that and it's absolutely astonishing mm -hmm. i mean you get snowflakes i mean you literally get frozen fractals that we would call snowflakes or frozen water and somehow the positive ones look absolutely beautiful and somehow the ones that death has spoken over, somehow frozen water ends up looking like horrible, jagged, destructive looking, you know, frozen ice blades. It, and obviously there's such a tremendous polar opposite that's going on there. And vegetation, when you speak life over vegetation and death over vegetation, these plants die. And these plants flourish. It's just, it's tremendous that, the, you know, this, the scientists have studied this over and over again, and it's proven over and over again everything that jesus has said is true about all that yeah we're trying to um, bring you guys um something different than what you're typically would hear you know in the institution so we want to take it a bit deeper than just you know talking about jesus you know spoke to a fig tree and blah 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 we want to take it deeper and and show you that there's a frequency attached to that so when we frame up something and we speak it in like that or speak against it for it positive negative or whatever then um you know there's an invisible realm of things that are going on that you don't see you know that's taking place i mean we're like little light beings and we're just got all this stuff going on but you don't see it <laughs> Yeah, you know, I discussed this a little bit at the conference, as you know, but mm -hmm. Jesus in John 18, they came to arrest him in the Garden of Gethsemane, and they mm -hmm. asked him if he's the one they're looking for, 
he literally says, I am. And when he says, I am, it knocks all the soldiers backwards onto the ground. That, that means there was a tangible force and frequency that came forth just by him saying, I am. So we say just by him saying, but really it wasn't a just because of, it was because he did this. He knew what he was doing and the emotional stress that he had just gone through in the garden. He had such an intensity upon him that when he said, I am that tangible frequency of all of what was stirring inside of him in the garden went bam and knocked those men down. So there, once again, is one of those tangible forces and frequencies that got released and the people uh, actually got knocked down by it. So we can mm -hmm. see there was a cause and an effect from it, right? And like you mentioned, the fig tree, well, when he cursed, things happened. But when he blessed, things happened. Why? Because he understood what he was releasing and it was the, the frequency of the intention of his heart. So out of the intention, like you said, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth shall speak. So the intention and the frequency of what was coming out of his heart is what was actually then coming forth also out of his mouth. And that was why all of a sudden these forces join together and it creates ripples and shock waves through these radio waves, these, these collapsed particle forms that are all around us. And so when you observe things with certain intentions, you have a result from it. And that was definitely something that Jesus understood, that Paul understood, that Peter understood, that these people started to understand. That's why Peter's shadow, it was said, healed people. It wasn't his shadow that, like where you could put your hand, you know, I can't, I don't think I can make a shadow right now, but if you put your hand up in front of a light and cast it, yeah, there you go. Cast <laughs> a shadow. It's not like, it wasn't like this shadow right here. Yeah. It was like Peter was literally emitting a healing frequency everywhere that he went and so they would put it, the people out into the streets so that that healing frequency would just come forth out of him and touch all of the people there was like a shock wave and now we could get into some really deep stuff here karen so i don't know if you want me to keep going or not but we could get into some deep things about the waters being divided and the waters being all the reality of the spirit realm around us and if you throw a rock in the water, the ripples that you get, well, when you release these tangible frequencies and forces out into the quote unquote invisible realm, then it's like uh, ripples and shock waves going through the waters of the spirit realm. It's pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, well, we'll, we'll go into that. Um, um, Paul. Okay. Yeah. So the thing that um, also what you're saying about the reflection, um, folks, we're just saying here that with Peter and them, those guys, when you see that reflection, they framed up something inside of them that the father could reflect on. So, <laughs> so um, that's what we're saying because they walked in and believed in the kingdom realm fully they didn't doubt it because um luke like so people speak every day by stripes we are healed and and they do all the things but they still got these little things that they're doing as a crutch to hold on to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know they may be holding on to this holding on to that and they're saying i keep saying these things but nothing's ever happening yeah. what, do you, what do you say to that well, so, you know, that, that's where we get into be transformed by the uh, renewing of your mind. So that goes back to what you were saying, all the little crutches. So if you continue to create your future based on what you've done in the past, you're going to continue to relive your past. Yep. So you're going to literally just continue to frame up your past as your future. If you continue to do all the same stuff the way you did it yesterday, the last month, the year before, all those things. And if any of that was based out of fear um, or if any of it is based out of concern that if you do it, don't do it this way, you're going to get something bad that happens, then you're still operating in that realm of fear and in death. So if you keep you know, quoting by his stripes, I am healed, but then everything else that your mind occupies is occupied with, well, if I don't do this, 
something bad's going to happen. Or if I don't try it this way, like my doctor said, something bad's going to happen. Or my family had this genetical disorder, you know, through our ancestry, then I got to make sure I focus on that. No, no, no. You literally just got to start focusing on reframing your whole entire mindset, therefore your whole entire life around the reality of you are healed. You are a healed being. You've been made whole. That the the self that has any uh, relationship to sickness, disease, or death was crucified. And so that if you can have the faith, like you know, I've heard somebody say this somewhere before about being healed, but it's 100% true with everything we're talking about now. If you can have the faith that you've received salvation, if you can have the faith that Jesus has done what he's, the Bible said he's done, and he has, then you can have the faith to walk in any of these other deeper realms. Yeah. It's all about just retraining your mind. You know, if, if you've ever, if anybody's ever quit having some type of an addiction, if anybody's ever stopped, um, wanting to watch certain TV shows or whatever it is, if you've ever had a pattern of doing something and then you change that pattern, it's the same idea. It's, it's not about just speaking things. It's about literally reframing your whole entire mindset around that being truth. And therefore you're no longer saying it to try to convince yourself. Yeah. You're that's saying, the difference. Yep. Yes. You're saying it out of the reality of it being true. Because instead of, because that's really what happens. A lot of times we're trying to convince ourselves with our declarations. But when our declarations have just become what we know is true, then you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. You squeeze an apple, you get apple juice. You squeeze somebody that knows who they are and out's going to come their truth. Out's going to come the reality of who they are. And so that that's my answer to that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you do touch on like people that are taking medication, um, you know, are they supposed to stop their medication completely? You know, you've touched on that in your book. Yeah. How about, um, how about like people that would say like, um, what's your view on, well, um, God didn't always heal people right away. They had to go through the process. Would that be like the medication part? Um, yeah, in a way. So the process really is just retraining, is just the whole reframing of your mind. Okay. That, that scripture has come so alive to me over the past couple of years that I, I literally can't not have a day where I don't think about that scripture be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's because our mind has been given to us as one of the singular most important and powerful things we've ever been given. And we don't really understand it. And I'm even saying that about myself um, because we say our mind and we think of the muscle that is our brain. That's not our mind. That's that's literally just a muscle. That's the same thing as having muscles in my arm and my hand, whatever. But our brain, I mean, our mind is actually the, our conscious awareness of everything. So, you know, the, the mind of Christ that it says in Philippians that we have now been given is really reframing ourselves to see everything's everything the way Jesus saw everything and to reframe everything the way the Father sees everything. So that's where we learn to judge differently. That's where we learn to see differently. It's where we learn to live differently. It's where we begin to no longer look at things as a merely human form. And that's literally what Paul says also in 2 Corinthians 5. After he says you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, he says we no longer look at anyone as a merely human because all that stuff is gone. Yeah. We're part of a whole new creation where if that was a human reality, you know, at some point in time before, that's not you anymore, you know? And every day you can wake up and reframe everything about your existence, literally. You know, science is even coming out. Dr. Joe Dispenza is an amazing voice into this right now. And Kirby Delanerall has come out really talking about some of that, uh, and Justin Paul Abraham, but really talking about how you can literally wake up every day, because it says his mercies are new every day. and. Jesus says not to worry about tomorrow. So if you really start to piece all these things together, you can look at what's known as the eternal now. And everything you live out of right now is the eternal now, where your past, present, and future are all what your mind says it is. And so you really start to just reframe everything out of living out of today, which, for the record, is a person. <laughs> 
Today is the person of Christ, but Christ is also the anointing, which is why we're the body of a person, Christ, which is not the body of Jesus for the record. Jesus is part of the body of Christ. <clears throat> we talked about that at the conference a little. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Yeah, that's not his last name, folks. Yeah, it wasn't Mary, Joseph, and Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he anointed one. So when we recognize that we've become the anointed one with him, it's because we understand that we live in a realm known as Christ consciousness, which is the word, and we can start to reframe everything around that. I thought it was interesting. Um, I have two thoughts. Sure. I thought it was interesting that um, you talked about like, well, we're talking about not dying, y'all. We're talking about like being yeah. like an Enoch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess we question... never really said it about my book yet, did I? <laughs> <laughs> it means that you can, you can never die and keep this physical body right. and transform it and keep it forever. Oh, that ah. was interesting. Oh. Like they say, but they all died. Like, you know, Paul and them died, but you were like, they did, but they released themselves to. Chose it. Yep. Wow. Yep. And we've seen a lot more. We, we've seen a lot of that that's just not really talked about a whole lot. But even in a lot of charismatic streams, we've seen that a lot. Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth Hagen is just a, is a current example. I say current as in, you know, it's been within the past you know, 100 years. <clears throat> but it, this was just within the past 20 years. Kenneth Hagen, uh, Kenneth Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, um, told his family the day he was going to pass away uh bob jones bob jones knew he was going to pass away on valentine's day um and and they gave up literally their life on purpose they laid it down to use biblical language and i do go into that a lot in the book as you probably already read that jesus says no one can take my life from me and so a message that I really try to hammer home to anyone who will listen at all is you can choose to not have your life ever taken from you either. You can choose that. And if you read in the book, you'll see Paul chose that. Paul was immortal. It was literally when he said, and we've all quoted this before, but I don't think we've ever grasped it, that he said, I ran the race. I finished my course. He literally lived and then decided now I'm done. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to move on. Because he's the same one who said to live is to gain and, and, and to die is to, is, or to live is Christ and to die is to gain. So he literally just decided, I'm just going to go ahead and transition here. And you can get, I didn't get into that a lot in my book, um, but you can find a lot of other uh, stories out there. Excuse me. You can find a lot of other stories out there where Catholic saints back in the you know early hundreds and late thousands lived uh for four and five hundred six hundred years just like in biblical times and everyone knew that but some of them literally are re recorded saying that they left and laid down their body and went ahead and passed on because they got tired of watching all their friends and then their friends children and then their yeah. friends children's children die <laughs> and so they literally were just like okay i'm ready to shift into the dimension a different dimensional realm and lay my body down or they took their body with them and they just went and they were gone and you know, there's a, there's a Catholic saint's body you can still go find right now. I believe it's in, I believe it's in Rome, that his body has been laying for at this point it's been six, seven, eight hundred years, something like that, maybe even longer, maybe it's more like a thousand. I don't remember. I read it in, I read it in a book by Tyler G. Johnson, The Dead or Raised. But um, there's a, there was a Catholic saint laying in a glass casket, with no, no embalming, nothing else done to the body whatsoever. But the body is still as fresh looking as you know the day that they decided to pass on and the head is not even attached to the body because he chose to be to be decapitated the head's not attached to the body but it's laying there together and you, like if you could reach in and touch it it feels like the way our body feels right now it's so saturated with life and then there are saints of old that chose to only eat communion for 40, 50, 60 years, St. Catherine of Assisi, she, uh, of Assisi, I think it's Assisi, but I always say it like Assisi, yes. that I was like, oh, you got to quit doing that, because I don't mean to, it just pops out like that. <laughs> <laughs> she was one of them, she took for 40 years, wow. for 40 years, all she had was a piece of bread and a, and a little shot of wine, and took communion, as far as physical food goes. And, you know, it's because these people understood what Jesus said when he told 
Satan in the wilderness, he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from out of the mouth of the Father. So when we really truly grasp the new creation that we are, water isn't needed. I'm saying some bold stuff here. I know saying you're immortal is pretty bold, but I'll continue on with some just as bold comments, which is you could live without water. You can live without food. You can live without sleep. You can live without those things because you don't need that to live. That's a human thinking. What you need is the presence of God, the breath of God, the word of God, the life of God saturating and flowing through you. That's why sometimes I can feel it come on me so strongly that I literally feel like my body's going to burst into pieces. Because <laughs> you feel that. I mean, you saw me a couple of times at the conference, you get that energy and you're just like, Oh, like, I, like right now I'm feeling it like a little bit mm -hmm. I, where I just I feel like I want to go lift some weights because I'm just feeling so like jacked but it's that energy I mean look at Elijah Elijah it said girded up his loins and ran ahead of horses now there's two things it? <laughs> yes I mean that guy was flat dogging it now but I honestly think what happened there to be honest with you which is just as supernatural is that I actually think that he translated okay so it's pretty powerful to say he ran on his two feet ahead of horses, which I'm going to say could be real. I'm not saying I know 100% sure, but my thoughts on it, based on everything we saw happening with Elijah, is that it probably actually meant that he went and translated ahead of where the king was going. But either way, what we're talking about here is something that's impossible to human standards, but is possible in the realm of the kingdom and in the realm of Christ. Yeah, it's definitely uh, it's supernatural either way you want to look at it. And we have to get our heads out of the 2D zone matrix that we're in and get into 5 and even 6D um, realm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we are highly supernatural beings. We are a spirit and a body, not a body with a spirit. And once we really start stepping into that, then we'll start doing some things that well jesus said it you'll do the same thing i did and more so when we we have to get our minds out of the 2d thinking and the church agey kind of thinking or we're not gonna come up to like even you said in your book that adam you know he's a pretty high level dude right but we should be a little higher than even adam we're not, we're not, we're not even in the same class as adam right Second Corinthians 5, 17, we are a kinos being. In Christ, you are a new, brand spanking new, never before seen, unprecedented, fresh, whatever word inserted there that means it's never been done before, creation. Mm -hmm. Not Adam 2.0, we're a Christ 1.0. <laughs> right. The original plan. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's well beyond that. And let me ask you this too, Karen, you know, it says, it says the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells where within you within me so the same spirit and then it says literally quickening your mortal body which means you, it's wanting you to be transformed from mortal to immortal say another scripture first first peter 1 23 for you've been born again from incorruptible seed what's incorruptible seed I just flipped the page. You just said this. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going through as you're talking. I was like, I just saw that. Yeah. Awesome. Incorruptible seed. That means seed that has no corruption in it. But guess what we've been told a whole lot about our bodies? That's what we've been told a whole lot about who we are. You're born right into this earth, mm -hmm. sinful and corrupted. So a lot of things we've had framed up over us has caused us to come into covenantal relationship with death. And that's where we got to go into the realms of heaven. Even if you don't see it, even if you're not to the point yet where you can see it manifesting in front of you or feel like you're not actually stepping into that realm, then just by faith, say, Father, I ask that you would crush any altars where there's been any corrupt covenants made with any wicked entities connected to death or decay or destruction or disease by the power of Jesus's blood and just know that the father is faithful and wants that for you too and you'll just know that that altar is now crushed now destroyed by the power of the blood yeah and um, another thing is we have to look into the future because 
um, in the institution, you know, you were told you're a sinner, you're this, you're that. You know, we might have a little generational thing going it. But if you keep saying it, okay, and you're and you're kind of moving through some of that and working, you know, changing your mindsets, character building, whatever. Yeah. But you keep saying you're a sinner. Well, you, you keep saying speaking death on yourself. Go yeah. into the future. Get out of your 2D box. And let's walk into the 5D, 6D and start walking this stuff out and start saying something different. Because, see, Luke in this book has got like thousands, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but a lot of scripture in here that's yeah. backing a lot of this stuff up, what he's saying about immortality. I mean, it's wall to wall scripture in this thing. And um, just quite, I mean, it's stuff you're like, I've heard it before. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. I've said it myself. Right. But I've breezed over this with a 2D mindset. Yeah. And I'm not really. Well, he says so, but I'm not seeing it. Well, you're not seeing it because you're not framing it up. Yeah. I know that's hard to say, but I mean, we have to be real here. <laughs> so many people that have come from mindsets that uh, healing can't doesn't take place, mm -hmm. and they encounter it. Mm -hmm. People coming from backgrounds that say speaking in tongues isn't real, then they encounter it. Yeah. So now we're moving into that same realm in the body which was 20 years ago, immortality, that's for the wicked. Immortality is only for those that are trying to never die in, in bad ways. And I still, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that one, but you know, I guess where people are getting concerned about transhumanism and things like that, I guess is why they've handed immortality over to the wicked, just like we do with so much. But immortality- Get me started, please. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus is, is very clear in John 11 when he's talking to Mary and Martha, and they say, if you had been here when Lazarus died, then you, you would have saved him from dying. And he says, I, do you not know that I can raise him up? And I say, we know he's going to be raised up in the last day. And Jesus says something that we really need to grasp every single day of our life, especially as the body, where he says, stop looking for everything to be somewhere in the future. And that's why I like what you said, because instead of taking it out in the future, leaving it out in the future, make it come into your present eternal now, because Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, you, Mary, just said you're waiting for a day or a time frame or a climactic moment or something specific to happen. And he said, that's me. <laughs> I'm here. So now that's what we can do. Instead of looking for a day off over yonder or a specific thing that's one day yet to come, we can say, he has come. He is here. That truth is now, now. Now faith is. Literally, I love that one, the day it got changed for me by David Hogan. When, and I had never seen it. It's just one of those moments where you never see it like that. And then all of a sudden you do. Yeah. Now faith is. You always hear it as a statement that's like, you know, beginning a, a conversation like, now look here. But literally, that's meaning look here now. So now faith is means faith is now. Now, immediate. Resurrection power, now. Immortality, now. Why? Because he's brought it all. It's all fulfilled through him. He opened the doorway and said, come on inside and gather up all these gifts that I've given to you. It's all now. <laughs> and it's just like, whew, man, we got it. You know, in, in, in the book of John, man, I'm so, I'm so fired up, Karen. You got me. <laughs> I'm go to seven hours now. I'm all jacked up. Like, I'm hey, you know of what? You know what? And look, I've been listening to a lot of Ian Clayton, man. He keeps bringing up the same thing about when he got Legionnaire's disease. He's oh, sitting yeah. there. He's like, I'm going home. Yeah. And then, uh, how come nobody's praying for me? Blah, blah, blah. And Jesus says, I taught you how to heal yourself. Why? Okay, Why? for the people stepping out of the 2D and going into the 5D, you don't, when you're walking in sonship, you don't need the people around you to lay hands on you to heal you. Right. You speak it in, you frame it up, and you can speak it in yourself. Yep. yep. Now, somebody's going to say, because I know that, what, because the gifts and stuff are for the unbelievers. Come on, y'all. If y'all walking in 5D, 
you don't need somebody to lay hands on you. You can speak it in yourself. The right. gifts are given for the unbelievers. So the people that need that level, well, it's there available to them. But us as sons walking in maturity, walking in the 5 and 6D, you got the power to do it yourself. You know, I brought up at the conference, I don't know, this shake, shakes people's little lives a little bit because um, I brought up um, the thing about the fivefold ministry. I mean, we are not to despise them. They're, um, they're there. They were there for us to learn. But you don't stop there because if you keep reading the scripture, it says, until you walk into the sonship, not when you die, not when you go to heaven. Then it's just a portal, guys. You got to step into the next level. Yep. Fivefold ministry is for people just learning and and just it's a time where you need it. And then as you're maturing, you and working your stuff out, then you're working at a higher level. Now you're king and priest, yep. which is another conversation. <laughs> Real discipleship, like you're saying. The, the, you know, because we can tie it into those scriptures where it talks about the law was for a time frame so that people would be under tutors. It says, while yet a child, even though you be the inheritor of all, you're under tutors for a time frame, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same reality with the fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministry is not the peak of Christianity or the peak of the kingdom or the peak of God's plan. Yes. Part of it. Right. And the starting of it is that until you grow into a place of maturity, look at us in our lives. I'm raising children, and at one point I was a child being raised by parents, but it was until I got to a point where my parents said, okay, you are now released into your world as your own mature adult. I mean, you know, they said that loosely. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I now get it as a parent, right? Because I have yeah. a very, very young child. And then I have one that's almost a teenager, and there's stark contrasts in the way their lives are and the way that I engage with them in their lives. And then at the same time, there's a point coming where I will still be helping to mature a couple in my household when there's a couple that have already moved into their own state of maturity, right? Yeah. So this, is not, this is exactly what you're saying. It's not about moving away from whether or not you should be part of church or whether or not you should be this or that. It's about the idea of what is actually supposed to be maturing you how are you supposed to continue to become matured and how what are you growing into you know colossians 3 says we were predestined to be conformed to the image of the son which means we should be somewhere we're way not at <laughs> in the large majority of believers which is doing everything that jesus did how much do we actually see that with the body seeing what jesus did accomplished not very much and truthfully, our measurement on that has been way below that also. And what I mean by that is we measure that a lot of times by how many people are getting healed, if the dead has been raised, if there was a revival, if there were people that spoke in tongues, you know what I mean? And so our measurement on doing what Jesus did is way at the base anyway. And I'm not yeah. bashing any of that. I'm agreeing with right. you saying to the people that it's about a place of maturity, faith to faith, glory to glory, increasing. Yes, the fivefold ministry has its purpose, but it is like an elementary school. Yes. And then you grow, and well, we won't even, I won't even say elementary school to make it sound that derogatory. I don't even mean it derogatory. It's like until you graduate high school. Yep. And there then all I mean, branch what it is. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you branch out into what's what's your mature state now? What is your destiny scroll that you really start tapping into, right? And so who did who who were the disciples matured by? Jesus himself, right? So who are we supposed to be matured by? Yeah. Jesus. Sometimes he thought, y'all ain't getting it either. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of times he would fall in the mountain just to get away from his own disciples for a little bit and be like, dear, dear myself, dear God, dear myself, I gotta, I gotta go take a breather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel it. So... <laughs> We all gotta do that with kids, right? <laughs> it's so funny, but I mean, you know, like, um, and stepping into 
What I'm saying is when I go there and say out of that scripture in Ephesians where we talk about fivefold until you're maturing son, blah, 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 then you're not immature anymore. I mean, it says it, it's right there. Mm -hmm. And um, so walking in this immortality is a, is a mature stage too, very mature stage. Yeah, and like I like to tell people jokingly is that I haven't been able to prove it yet, but that's my plan. <laughs> for myself i haven't been able to prove that i'm immortal but i, I, I that's my plan <laughs> right i mean yeah i mean i, I hear what you're saying because we're on the process of of doing it and for you to be able to write it then you're on your own journey too so you're just not writing it just because you want to write a book because right. <laughs> writing books aren't easy it's hard so, to sit down and write a book <laughs> it's way harder for me to actually for me personally to try to so yeah I fully agree because it's, it's it was way harder for me to actually try to put it into a book format versus just being like I understand a lot of this stuff internally right <laughs> and putting it on paper you know just writing it out is is mine I mean uh same yeah. thing with music lyrics I mean I'm writing something on the dark cloud I know what I want to say but trying to squeeze it into yeah. <laughs> to a lyric is another story oh, so. yeah. Very much. <laughs> That's awesome. So, like we say, that so walking out in mortality is is a maturing process. And as you like, when you read his book and you see the scriptures, it kind of you know tells you. I mean, it's an instruction manual for sure. I mean, you're not just talking about something and then people go, "Well, how are you doing?" You yeah. know, and his book is a, is a, a manual of a sort, I think, because I've pretty much read all the way through it. So Paul, I mean, Paul was like, I mean, all of them that you mentioned in here were awesome, but Paul, I mean, he had the upper hand on this thing. <laughs> Definitely. I yeah, mean, I mean, we all we all know what happened with Paul, but I don't think it ever really sunk in for a lot of us. I know it didn't for me for a long time. Uh, until the Lord really started awakening my, me to immortality. But I knew about, you know, like Paul with the snake. Oh, yeah. Being bitten, throwing it back into the fire. And then, you know, when he talks about in Scripture where he was beaten multiple times, where he was um, drowned, uh, basically tried to be drowned, shipwrecked for multiple nights. Um, and then you can find other research, uh, or you can research other stories that aren't in the Bible, where it talks about Paul was also uh, drugged by horses. He was thrown into um, the arena with gladiator animals, you know, all this kind of stuff, things that he survived. And many of the uh, other saints did that as well. I talk about John the Beloved in there as well. John also survived a lot of those things as well. And so then all of a sudden you start to piece it together and realize, you know what, Paul, Paul is grasping something here that he can choose not to lay down his life. It's like Jesus said. Jesus said that. And so now all of a sudden Paul got a grid for it, recognized that it was real. And then he also is the one who wrote to Timothy and said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 10, Christ who abolished death. Abolished means completely removed, destroyed, mm -hmm. eliminated, got rid of death and shed light on the gospel of life and immortality. That's, that's what Paul said. He said the gospel fully includes, and he didn't even say it includes. He actually says the gospel is, basically in a nutshell, depending on your translation, that they're all roughly going to say, shed light, um, showed us the understanding of, gave us the knowledge of, all those kinds of things. The gospel being life and immortality. That's the gospel. Life and immortality. 2 Timothy 1.10. And so now, yeah. The kingdom being life and immortality. So if you catch hold of that and connect it to one of the scriptures in the, uh, the book also, Romans 8, that it says our, our inheritance as sons of God is the redemption of our bodies. That means our bodies are fully associated to this immortality. It's not just having a soul or, or a spirit or whatever that exists forever. It's about your body supposed to be doing the same thing as well. Enoch has the same body. Jesus had the same body has this, I don't know why I said had, Jesus has the same body, I know what I was thinking, it's because mm -hmm. he came and took it out of the tomb, so he had the same body, you know, um, 
Moses had the same body. Elijah has the same body. All these people have the same body that they had right from the very start of being knit together in their mother's womb. And that's that's the gospel of life and immortality. Hey, you talked about in the book um, about these guys, um, you know, they were walking around in the uh, desert. Um, there was something dimensional going on there, right? Oh, I know yeah. you spoke about it at the conference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you can you can open up different dimensional realms, and that goes back to where we started with the conversation of our words and the, the frequencies that we can actually release, where there is a tangible cause and effect. And so, in in, in the Israelites' case with Moses. Moses literally, when you go back and study that, he was the one, the Lord said, do this thing. And so Moses is the one who holds up his rod and he opens up or divides the waters and opens up a whole new realm. And they literally walked into that realm and then he seals it off. And I got a question for you guys too. <laughs> I didn't bring that up in the, at the conference or in the book, but it's something that I've been contemplating for a while now. When did it ever say that Moses went to the went to the other side with the Israelites? <laughs> uh, people just assume. <laughs> right. That's right. So see, Moses Moses himself had an escape plan. <laughs> okay. He knew how to get into that dimensional realm reality. And uh, Aaron, you're making me jump the gun a little bit here. I will release a teaching about this soon. It's probably especially going to be on my Patreon page, but I may just release it to everyone because it's pretty current to what's going on in the world right now and needs to be understood. But we see this was in so many cases. So Moses opened up the, a portal realm for the Israelites to walk into, which is why they lived somewhere 40 years. That should have only taken them 11 days. Sorry, that doesn't happen just because of bad GPS. It doesn't happen because they they get lost. I'm sorry. You don't take 40 years to get to where it takes you 11 days. You're going to even accidentally end up at that place at some point, <laughs> way sooner than 40 years, all right? So why is that? It, it was a different dimensional realm that Moses opened up for them to go into because when you actually see what all took place there and you can connect this to first corinthians 10 and where karen mentioned the dark cloud she's writing a song about it mm -hmm. uh the dark cloud is also mentioned there in first corinthians 10 and also the baptism into the cloud of moses is mentioned there awesome. that dimensional realm that was opened up well genesis 1 they divided the waters and that's where they stuck heaven they stuck the heavens in the earth right moses is the one who wrote about that Moses understood this reality, so he knew how to open up realms for new dimensional realities. That's what he did with the Israelites. Joshua watched Moses do all this. Joshua in Joshua 3 divides the waters and causes the waters to actually back up to the city named Adam. Come on, that, that's got its whole other teaching within its own self. Oh <laughs> and then we could go on and on. Elijah. Elijah did it. Elisha did it. These people knew how to open up these different dimensional realms. And like we talked about Elijah earlier, um, Elijah literally was confronted by the king's uh, uh, court master. And he says, hey, tell your king I'm coming to him today. And the, and the guy says, hey, no, Elijah, I know you. I'm going to go tell him you're coming. And then the Lord's going to come and carry you away in a spirit. And you're going to translate somewhere else. And then the king's going to have my head for life. And Elijah's like, no, no, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> and then you can read about where Elijah was in the cave. And when Elijah was in the cave, it said while he was in the cave, he then appeared before the king. <laughs> oh, my. Then he yeah. appeared. How about that? Yeah, then he appeared. So he was never left the cave, but he also appeared to the king in the king's court. How was that? He, he was bilocated. He was existing in multiple places. He understood how to do that. Which is, guess what? You and me. Immortal. Yeah, because you live in Christ in heavenly places. And yet we also live in this realm, which is just one of the many uh, dimensional realms that we exist in. But anyway. I know everybody watches superheroes and they believe all that, right? But when you tell them this stuff, man, it wrecks their yeah, logical that's, thinking. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's fake. That's, that's, that's fake. <laughs> 
where do these people get these ideas from? I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> you know this is true. That's why you see all these movies now for the past several years, especially in the past decade. Uh, and I talk about it in the book. I told I told my wife, so this is the reason I wrote the book about 10, 12 years ago, closer to 15 now, actually. Um, I leaned over and looked at my wife one night studying, and it was the first time Second Timothy 1.10 had really cracked open for me. And I looked over at her, and I, under inspiration of Holy Spirit, I spoke out a prophetic word to her, and I said, I feel the Lord saying so strongly right now, the next big awakening and revolution in the body is going to be about the understanding of immortality. And now, at that point, there was nobody that I had ever heard say that. It wasn't even on my grid. Mm -hmm. Really, it wasn't. And then now, all of a sudden, fast forward a few years later, I ran into a man named Cobus. Well, I didn't run into him. I found out about him because he lived in South Africa. But I found out about a man named Cobus Van Rensburg that was teaching the same stuff. And I was like, somebody else is saying this. Oh, my gosh. And now you can find it all over the place being talked about by people because why because it's something that is now breaking for the veil is being removed you know it's one of the new glory to glories faith to faith realities where the veil is being removed for people to start to catch a hold of the truth hey you know um check this out you know uh, at the conference i was speaking on i didn't take up a whole lot of time talking about um sound and frequency but um Robin Main posted something yesterday or day before, and um, I was like, oh my gosh, she's speaking my language today. And um, I was talking about um, Fibonacci and the uh, numerical sequence creates the pattern, looks like the uh, flower of life, also the tree of life. Did you know if you stand under a tree, it's a geometrical pattern? Yeah. Of Fibonacci, isn't that crazy? A tree, okay? Yeah. That I could go a ton of places with seashells. that. <laughs> Have you seen the inside of seashells? Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. But I mean, like the tree thing, if you're up under it and you look up through there and you oh, see all the branches, it's a uh, geometrical pattern. Yeah. And I mean, I just go back to the tree, you know, from Adam and Eve and yeah. Jesus hung on the tree. And I mean, there's just so much going on. So, I was like, yeah, I go, and I was telling her, I was like, yeah, I was just like 100, if the mathematical sequence, the 144 is a fully activated DNA and nine gates, okay? Mm -hmm. She came back and said, and I said, there's something else going on here because see, when I heard 144 is a fully activated DNA, the scripture about the 144,000, I was go. I don't think this is about a number of people that are staying behind a rapture, whatever the theology is being taught on that. I think it's a fully mature body, okay? She comes back and says, did you know that that vibrates at 144,000 per second? <laughs> really? Yes. Whoa. <laughs> so the frequency, the 144, so you know that clears me up. I'm like, okay, I knew God is saying something different about the 144,000 and the fully activation oh, wow. DNA. That's, that's, that's good. That's cr crazy. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so Robin's all over it. I was like, oh, my God, she come from, I mean, I was waiting. I go, I know something's trying to be said here. You know, yeah. and I was telling Tracy at the church, I go, I'm just getting something on this. I don't know what it is. And here comes Robin. <laughs> that's so good. Wow, yeah, that, that, I had never heard that either. So that's, I'm really, mm -hmm. right now. you can see it on my face. I'm like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's yeah, so I mean, and that's what you're talking about. Again, yep. immortal. Yeah, because, you know, uh, Jesus, was, <laughs> Jesus was immortal even though he died. And, what, and the reason being is because he chose to lay his body down, which means he knew the true immortal version of himself could lay his body down and pick it up at any time, which is why he said it that way, mm -hmm. which is also why he transfigured before he uh, allowed the crucifixion to take, take place with his body because he was transfiguring to show his original nature and it wasn't just that you know um all of a sudden light shone out of his body it was that his whole entire body dna became that frequency of light so now that 
very well has my whole system churning now thinking about the whole 144,000 and the frequency of that DNA and that pure light. That's good. That's amazing. Fully activated. <laughs> I mean, that right there, I was like, oh my gosh. And then, see, the more I was kept digging and digging and digging and, and that scripture kept coming up, I'm like, there's something about that scripture. And theology says it's a rapture. It's the people left behind. It's this. It's the Gentiles. It's the Jewish. And I'm like, well, that's, I don't know. <laughs> that one's the big one. That one's the big one used for the Jehovah's Witnesses, too. Their whole thing is that there's only going to be 144,000 in heaven. So, right. There's, there's definitely some major clarity that needs to come around all this. <laughs> what I find yeah. super interesting about that too is just like uh, when your bassist Dave spoke about 432, and he was talking about all the different numbers, and they all equal nine. And Gil, you know, spoke yeah. about and said, "Wow, all of that equals nine. Yeah. What's 144 equal? Nine. <laughs> nine. Hey, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's a new, it's it's a new conscious reality." Uh, nine is the is the higher consciousness understanding, and that gets into where you understand everything with Nikola Tesla as well, where he talked about the three six and nine in nine. the sacred geometry and the and the tree of life as you're talking about connected with uh, basically heaven heaven mathematics and, and, and geometry, which is just now you start look look at the background that you, look at where your background is. I know right. I'm in a portal. <laughs> <laughs> So cool. So awesome. But yeah, once again, that nine, opening up into that nine again. And it's, it's so amazing because really, if you think about the letters one through nine, eight is, you know, seven is finished work. Eight is new beginnings. But it's also because eight is the infinity symbol. It's actually just laid over, you know, but it's the infinity symbol because the the it's actually more accurate to me. People look at things linearly. So we still call the infinity symbol sideways, but really heavenly it's Jacob's ladder. It's the infinity symbol. It's the DNA mixed into the infinity symbol, yep. the immortality. And then yep. breaking through into the immortality, you go into the number nine, which is the new higher consciousness, new realities. It's awesome. Yeah, because uh, fully activated DNA and nine gates. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then people talk about chakras. Okay, this is a little new aging people, but that's okay. Hey, chakras, you know what that means? Wheels, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, if you want to look at that, like wheels within the wheels. Your background changes again to what you're talking about. <laughs> you have voice commanded background? No. <laughs> it. It's amazing. Yeah, Ezekiel, the wheel within yep. the wheel wheels within the wheels nine yep. gates yep. oh my goodness <laughs> yeah. so like we're all building like over through the conference we were all building off each other and I know it's continuing on okay and now a portal's open and we gotta you know I'm uh, really focused on like now we got to keep the momentum going uh, especially here in Virginia and keep it going so um, I know you are planning on doing some group stuff yeah right okay yes individually I have uh, put out and I've had a few people accept it I'm looking for it to grow bigger eventually you know I need to get a little a website and develop better than what I have now um, Right now, I'm basically just utilizing Patreon and Facebook, but I'm going to get into website development now, especially now that I've launched a book. But yeah, I'm looking to do some personal coaching slash mentorship uh, type programs. I literally just did it for the whole past month of uh, September um, and then did a fifth one we didn't originally plan for, but there was so much that came out. We did a fifth one, uh, and that was just two nights ago on Friday night with a, a group out of Australia. And it was only about 20 people. We pers we purposefully kept it um, smaller and intimate, but I'm looking to be able to open up to do it individually and then small groups and even on large group groups, uh, sessions. But yes, I'm really starting to look to expand into some of that. So when you do your class, what are y'all, what are you teaching on? Well, it would, it would be different topics each time, I'm sure. Um, you know, on Patreon, sometimes it just turns into kind of just a free-for-all <laughs> chat with my patrons, which, you know, we all love that. 
getting into just chatting away about whatever we want and their q a session is really what it's mostly about on those live ones and i put little individualized teachings uh in there and stuff like this that i do with people i put a, a link into my page but then the q a live sessions once a month um that can just turn into talking about whatever however you know mm -hmm. and then yeah. going what you really feel about some of this and i'm like oh brother um but here we go uh and then but the one that we just did with the group in australia was called sonship is godship and it was about explaining how you know jesus fully understood and was trying to get everybody else to understand that john 10 34 of your own scripture says that you are gods and literally saying that you are literally a god in the earth because you are the son of the most high god you know, and as and I've said this many times, I said at the conference, and I, I just respect him. And that's why I quote some of the stuff that he says. But as Chris Blackaby says, which I highly respect, if a giraffe gives birth to a giraffe, it's a giraffe. If an alligator gives birth to an alligator, it's an alligator. If God Almighty gave birth to you, then what are you? You're the essence of God. You have you are a God person. You are a deity which is why the scriptures tell you that Psalm 82 is what Jesus is referencing there. But in that point in time, he's referencing uh, a race of beings that exist. Uh, that's like an angelic class known as gods. They're the ones mentioned in Genesis three, Genesis six, Genesis one, um, Psalm 82, Psalm 89. Uh, they're the ones that the law was wrote about. Well, it's not because there's idolatry mentioned in the law, but there's also have no other gods before me. That's not, idol that's not idolatry mentioned twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's literally not serving any of the other gods that exist, which are a race of beings. It's the same as not worshiping angels. Paul understood that you can worship angels just like they understood you can follow a false god because there's a race of beings. That, anyway, I'm getting off topic, but it led up to us being that new creation reality and, and that's mentioned in Romans 8 that's uh, known as huios theos which is that new creation being, which is that God-man reality that Jesus was and is. And he said, that's you. Yeah. So anyway, to answer your question, it can be different topics, but that's what we just went through with, with the group in Australia. Okay, so, I mean, what do you, um, like, what do you hear that um, people ask the most? I mean, what do you think right now people want to engage in the most? Well, of course, of course, one of the main things people are, are talking about is everything connected to COVID and the jab, DNA, and all of that. So, of course, you know, a whole lot of things about that. But um, a lot of people are um, becoming very intrigued with some of the things we talked about tonight, without a doubt. You know, there's really a whole conscious awakening uh, amongst the, those that are continuing to press in deeper in the body uh, about time travel, you know, entering into the ascension realms, um, engaging face to face with angelic beings and angels and a cloud of witnesses in heaven and immortality and, um, you know, cleansing our DNA and all those different kinds of things. Those are some of the main topics that people are all a time travel type stuff, you know, transportation, mm -hmm. dimensional moving. Um, so those are definitely all the same kinds of things that we, we engage with a whole lot. And then, um, with being associated with revolution is here a lot of the people that are my that are patreons were you know people that i met you know yeah. glad through that yeah and so we definitely talk a whole lot about other things that uh that group is affiliated with you know well something. I, I mean i know y'all go out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a lot of i spent the first five months um on my patreon page breaking down things in the Old Testament connected to the, the Elohim, the Benai Elohim, the reptilians, the Nephilim, uh, the Raphaim, and stuff like that. So we really went hard after that the first few months. And so, you know, we definitely deep dived into some of those topics that, or, that originally brought us together. <laughs> yeah, and I want to um, say to people too, because we talked about this to some of our people that came to the conference, um, I put up uh, True Seeker's video on the lost books of the Bible. Guys, I'm saying, if our Bible is awesome, 
but please do go through the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, Apocrypha, whatever, and because it's so much there to fill in the blanks. I know that you probably heard, well, they're not in the Bible, don't read them. Forget all that. <laughs> because guess what? Those books are mentioned in the Bible. And the person that you probably sit yourself under, half of them don't even really realize it or they, they know it and they won't say anything to you because they don't want you to know all that stuff. So, Book of Jasher, Book of Enoch, go in there and find find your things. How about um, Karina? Look. Karina also um, brings in on her book, The Book of Thomas. Because um, yeah. I, I think she said something about if you had that book or you were involved in it, um, that would cost you your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that time for, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, there's also there's also Jubilees, there's also yeah. Maccabees, um, you know, and that's the thing too. Over other people saying never to do that kind of stuff. It's very interesting because um, it depends on too which one you're even referencing as far as which Bible mm -hmm. is supposed to be the only one you're supposed to look at, and no other books. <laughs> because there's there's some out there that have 72 canonized books of the Bible versus the you know Westernized 66. So it's like, you know, it's very interesting. And then if we're all living epistles now, and we're basically the continuation, if you will, of the Bible being written through our through our lives, then it's like, well, that doesn't make much sense that these other people that encountered Jesus and walked with Jesus and walked with the disciples should be something that we just ignore. Mm -hmm. you know? And and then my other one too, oh man, uh, I'm probably gonna get myself in trouble with this one with somebody. Go ahead. Uh, shouldn't have even framed that up. Maybe I won't. Um, is we have the same people telling us not to read any of those other books that are extra biblical, but they themselves have written a book. And why you do that? <laughs> you didn't go there. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like if I write, it's like if I have this book, which I do, and I'm on here promoting it to you, and then saying. But don't read any of those. Don't read any of those books that have been not added to the Bible because they're not they're not Holy Spirit inspired or breathed upon. Then what the heck am I doing trying to get you to read my book? <laughs> it's simple as that. <laughs> me, man. You know, I saw a post. Um, oh, Luke, here we go. I saw a post. You know, literally, I think it was even while we were at the conference. I think it was even while we were at the conference and I, I was at back in the hotel room trying to wind down one of the nights afterwards and I was flipping through Facebook and pretty, pretty well known mainstream uh, charismatic prophetess um, had posted a post that said, just can we just stop already with trying to get people to read extra biblical books like Enoch? Got to stop having leaders in the pulpit trying to tell their flock that it's okay to read these extra biblical books. And I, Karen, I was, <laughs> I had to have a little conversation with Holy Spirit because I was this close to writing. But I know, because I know she's written multiple books. And so I was this close to typing that same thing I just said out, which was, oh, but I guess I should probably read what your book is about, though, that's extra biblical, right? And I went, nah, 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 I'm not going to go there, I'm not going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to judge differently so that I'll be judged differently. But it was just one of those moments where I was just so sad, you know, to, to see that kind of stuff. You know, it's just like, anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, so many people have questions to fill in the blanks, and those books help fill in the blank. Actually, it gives you a lot more detail on some things, because, I mean, I'm – going back through there and reading some things and I go oh that's okay <laughs> so it doesn't hurt you guys just you know I will say you have to go on your own journey you know absolutely because I will say based on what some people have had when people ask me about it if I've known them for a little bit and I know where they're at I will sometimes tell people maybe not now maybe yeah. one day because I, I know some people that I've listened to that have helped structure, you know, and change some things in me that I didn't need them earlier in my walk. 
they would have they would have just they would have really wrecked a lot of things for me truthfully but in the right timing you know what i mean yeah it, i hear you reference to where it was like oh this is this is what i need it now so i believe everybody that's on your you know this platform is, is fully ready and been able to handle and all that but i'm just saying you know sometimes some new converts i can maybe see possibly be in like you know, maybe not now maybe that stakes a little too much for a newborn <laughs> i don't know i think it depends on the person you know because i mean i dove in deep i went for the radical right off <laughs> and, and it just resonated with me bam you know but i know everybody's not like that so well but i i'm i'm like you i was like that too you know that's why i got in trouble right from the right off the bat <laughs> In the deep, falling into deep and jumping into so many intense things right away and being like, well, what about this? And it says this. And they're like, oh, we just don't talk about that. <laughs> we just pretend like it's not there. I'm like, hmm. Oh, yeah, we I pretend it's that. not there. I yeah. like that. You can't do that. Yeah, I pretty um, much jumped in pretty, um, pretty heavy uh, from the get go because, I mean, I'm kind of, I don't know, a little bit of a. Of a Rebelly <laughs> kind, of, kind of person. I mean, let let me let me let me have it. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like I mean, stuff will come across to you. Like um, I hadn't really. I mean, I heard reading those books, but I mean, just late, like in the past few years, people are putting some emphasis on getting into those and reading them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one time, you know, um, like. I, I just God just said to me, you know, stop babying the babies. Yeah, that's right. We keep babying the babies; they never grow up, you that's know. True. And if you got a curiosity about something, you know, check it out. I mean, Absolutely. you go, you do you, you do your journey, you know. Yeah, that's, right. that's all I can say. You know, and I shared with you that vision I had that time about full-grown adults sitting in the church that were uh, toothless and had cartoon baby heads, and they were sucking on bottles. <laughs> And I said, what in the world is this? Lord? And he said, I have, I have too many grown adults in the physical that have stayed on the milk and the spiritual that their baby teeth have come out and their adult teeth came in rotten and fell right out because they wanted to stay so much sucking on the bottle and staying on the milk that now without a radical transformation, I wouldn't be able to feed them anything other than milk or else they'd choke. You know what? And sometimes we underestimate people too. I'm gonna throw that in there. We may think that they're babies because they're just starting out, but don't underestimate them. You know, sometimes God's doing a quickening on people to learn it. What took you maybe 20 years might take the new generation a lot less time. <laughs> You're 100% right. Um, what is it, what's that parable about the ones that work the field for 10 hours and then the ones that work the field for five hours and the ones that work the field for an hour? They all got paid the same. That's right. That's 100%. Right. Right. That's good. You're, you're preaching to me, Karen. I know. I'm preaching it. <laughs> so cool. So cool. Well, um, we've been on here for a little while, and uh, we want to do it again. Look, go to Amazon. Pick up the book today yeah. and make sure that you write a review Please. and, and uh, for it because the algorithms in there help him get his book uh, on the top of the list up there. It's a great book, quick read, very simple, but deep. And, yep. uh, you know, it's worth the drive, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm totally cool. Cause that's, you know, that's what a lot of people have described it as. It's very plain, simple, but deep. And I am so glad because I actually intended on it being for anybody in any level of their walk, being able to read it and understand it and, and apply it. And even if, you know, because one of the things with it too that I hope it, it is doing is reaching a lot of people that aren't quote unquote Christians. Awesome. Because I would love for it to be something that got over into the, you know, new age realm or any of those kind of realms and people start to tap into some of this stuff and, and garner a walk with the Lord out of it, you know, that kind of stuff. Because it's, it's, it's not just about to me trying to write it to the church or trying to sound deep and cool. You know, it was really just like, hey, mm -hmm. I want everyone to see that this is pretty cut and dry. Yes, it's super deep. And yes, it may be outside of the grid you've ever had in your mind before. But the simplicity of it is the same simplicity of the super deep reality of God coming in the flesh, 
being birthed into the, uh, through a woman and all the other stuff that we can wrap our you know head around <laughs> by faith kind of thing so yeah, yeah. so yes yeah, please and thank you and if you if you know me um at all on here or even if you don't you can friend me and if you want a personalized copy um I'm just having people PayPal me and I'll ship it to you. I'll sign it. I'll write something in it. And there's ebook or paperback available. So yeah, please, please get it. Holiday season. That's right. Family and friends. Is coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put it under the tree, right? Hey, For real? The tree. We're back at it again. <laughs> right, back to the tree. There you go. There you go. Man, one of my favorite things in the holidays, Karen, at Christmas time was to lay under the tree. I mean, I, I, you would find me and my brother there sometimes for just hours, laying up underneath a lit up Christmas tree, a decorated Christmas tree, and just staring up through it. So that's really cool <laughs> uh, what we talked about tonight for sure. But, you know, and all, after your church group, you know, if you want to, for your church group, if you want to do a study on it, go through it chapter by chapter, understand some different things. This book is capable of doing it that way. Um, so, yeah, enjoy yeah, connect with uh, Luke on his Facebook page. Just look up a uh, Luke Aging and uh, friend him. He'll click you on there. You can also, again, pick up his book at Amazon uh, in the Kindle version and in paperback cover. Also, you can find us, the Elastic Army Band Live Talk, on the elasticarmyband.com. Join the group. We have a group on Facebook, which I'm uh, managing to... Uh, put things there, tools for you guys to uh, link up with for your study. So go there for the Elastic Army Band live talk group, and we have the Elastic Army Band page. So we just had a new release come out a couple months ago. Pick that up. Uh, if you were at the conference and you're here watching tonight, you can pick up our album there. And we're working on some new tunes, and stay tuned for as Luke is going to be joining us on a meditation album that's yeah. going to be exciting <laughs> i thought you said it was a metal album well <laughs> it's so funny so yeah so anyway we want to thank kingdom talks for allowing us to air on their show eight o'clock on sunday Thank you to Gil and Adina. You guys are great. Hey, they're finishing up their retreat in South Carolina. They'll be on their way somewhere else. Uh, I think they're stopping in Tennessee, maybe, and maybe stopping in to see some friends in, let me get it right, Mississippi, I think. So stay tuned for that. And like then they'll be on their way back home. <laughs> I feel like we needed to cue the Where in the World is Carmen San Diego theme and have Where in the World did Gil and Adina go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you can join their show Monday, uh, airing uh, this uh, 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 8 p.m. East Coast Time. So you stay on the line, Luke, and uh, we'll say thanks for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Yes, lessons. <laughs> All right, blessings. Bye.